ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is the Afternoon Weather Extreme video for Monday, the 8th of September. James Spann here in the Weather Center as we are watching Ike with interest, watching developments around here, a lot to talk about, so... Let's go. Here's a look at the uh, Skycam network. Uh, first off, we'll start with our Gulf Shores camera. Folks are breathing a little easier, I think. Uh, looking at the latest data on Ike, is, uh, the latest run is shifting more and more to the left, away from the Alabama Gulf Coast. But still, they're keeping an eye on it. Up this way, there's our Trustville Skycam uh, looking south right down Chalkville Mountain Road. A few uh, scattered clouds around today. Temperatures around or just over 90 is expected. And up in the mighty Tennessee Valley, there's the mighty Tennessee River as seen from the uh, Skycam at Decatur in Morgan County. And, of course, right across the river, you've got Limestone County there. There's the water vapor satellite imagery. Nice trough coming through the Plain States in the upper Midwest. Will that influence Ike? Well, most of the modeling saying no now. That will be bypassing Ike to the north. We'll be dragging a cold front down this way tomorrow, which probably means a little better chance of showers and storms. But, uh, you know, Ike is just the kind of storm that has wanted to trend south, farther south than what we've said, what the Hurricane Center said, what anybody has said. And Ike is even coming off the uh, coast of Cuba now. We'll see that in just a moment. First off, a quick peek at the radar at uh, 1.30 this afternoon. A few showers over Chilton, Coosa, Tallapoosa, Chambers, and Randolph counties down to the south. Uh, and again, uh, I think we'll see a little more action tomorrow with another front coming in from the north. Let's talk tropics. Here we go. Ike is uh, on the board clearly, and we've got the old Josephine, which is just having a hard time. It's nothing more than a swirl of low clouds out there. Uh, we'll watch that. Upper air winds could be a little better for development in coming days, but right now there's nothing happening there. So Ike is the story, and by golly, Ike, again, is trending farther south in NHC guidance and the modeling and everybody else. And you can see the eye is coming off the south coast of Cuba now. And, boy, this thing has just been raking Cuba. The model trend is fairly consistent in the 12Z run. Most models aiming this thing toward either the upper Texas coast or the southwest Louisiana coast. A couple of models want to turn it right including the no gaps up toward the southwest Louisiana coast. But most of them slow it down, and it just seems like Ike is going to be a storm that's going to miss the westerlies. Doesn't happen that often in September, but it could be the case. Uh, there's the GFDL, and it brings it into Galveston uh, this weekend. And you can see the pressure uh, near the surface there would be 108 knots. That's a pretty good hurricane. That's a Category 3 most likely. The wharf, by golly, is now in line with the GFTL. And, and, and again, the GFS has shifted too, as you'll see, but it brings in uh, Ike very close to Galveston Island, maybe a tad south of there, which is bad news for Galveston and Houston. And uh, this would be really late Friday night. Uh, you know, we've seen some models slow the thing down and uh, landfall delayed until early next week. Well, now you got the wharf here suggesting the thing comes in Friday night at, uh, at midnight. Here's a track from the Hurricane Center, and again, they're doing the right thing. They're just not bending much. No sense in jogging with every model discrepancy, and they've got it to, coming in the general direction of Galveston uh, during the weekend. Let's look at the GFS and see what we got here. Uh, this is the uh, 12Z run ballot at 1 o'clock tomorrow, 1 o'clock Tuesday. This is the 500 millibar level. That's about 18,000 feet off the ground. And you can see the troughs in the northern stream up there, the midwest latitude westerlies, but they're just bypassing Ike. They're too far north. Ike is too far south. Ike is below 25 west, and really until it gets above 25 west, it's not going to be influenced by that stuff. Uh, Ike tomorrow should be uh, uh, right around the western tip of Cuba. And again, note around here that front approaching from the north, the moisture levels are a little better, so we'll probably see a little more in the way of scattered showers and storms on radar. Wednesday, the front stalls out, and again, there could be a shower here, but no widespread rain. Uh, Ike is making the journey across the Gulf. Thursday, Ike is getting stronger, bending more to the west, not to the north. And again, we stay kind of soupy, so a chance of scattered showers and storms. Same deal Friday. Shower storm possible, no big super-duper rain event. Ike is approaching the Texas coast, and 
Where's this thing going in? The GFS says, hey, forget the Galveston talk. Let's talk about maybe uh, Freeport or Corpus Christi or maybe even South Padre Island. Now, remember the GFS on the OZ run last night that turned the thing up to Louisiana. Now it's got it coming in uh, over the lower Texas coast. You have to think, just based on the history of this storm, it's not wanted to trend north at all. It, it has been farther south than all the models, all the guidance, everybody in this business. Uh, and who knows, that could be right. But again, at this stage of the game, we just don't know. But certainly it seems like, based on the 12Z runs that have had a good bit of data coming from the uh, uh, aircraft in the vicinity of Ike, the Texas coast risk is increasing all the way from Brownsville up to the Sabine Pass. And then Sunday, the thing begins to move north inland. That's going to be a big rain event for places like uh, Waco, Dallas-Fort Worth, if that's right. Monday, it kicks out toward Arkansas. And then on Tuesday of next week, what's left of Ike is passing north of Alabama. Could we see some rain from Ike? Sure. In fact, I bet you we will. Uh, this is kind of suggesting the heaviest rain passes north of here. Could be right. But uh, we might indeed see a little bump in the rain opportunities toward the middle part of next week. We'll see. End of the forecast period, September 24th, ah, 588 circle. You know, we're, we're still looking for that big old whopper of a trough that will deliver that uh, really chilly air up north down here. Obviously, that's not it. But then again, this is just modeling. We're out there looking for trends, and we have seen no indication from global models of a big cold snap anytime soon. But... Hey, this is September. It will happen in due time. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. Notes on the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless.